I am Edie Lush, and I'm inside the converted... What is it again? Shipping Fishbowl. container. <laughs> what? Fishbowl. <laughs> I'm inside the fishbowl, and we are here. I'm here with Claudia. Claudia, introduce yourself with the microphone. It's so great to be here, Edie. <laughs> we're in Times Square with Shannon. Shannon Jacks, and you, and we were told at our dinner last night to speak to people from the Midwest about the Sustainable Development Goals. So welcome, Midwest. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be here. And tell us what your what your job title is, first of so, all. So, Shannon Jacks, I'm the Director of Repurposing for Kansas City Public Schools mm -hmm. um, and the past president of the Missouri Chapter of the American Planning Association. So, we have our national conference here in New York over the last four days. So, thousands of planners have taken on New York. Okay. So, what's interesting is that, now can we say, and had you heard of the Sustainable Development Goals before? I'm afraid to say I haven't. Okay, how does that make you feel, Claudia? It, it, it's totally, like, I am not surprised at all. I think that, the, no, 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 no. The, like, the, I, I think that we just had a download and told you that the Sustainable yeah. Development Goals are this plan of 17 goals that basically constitute the business plan uh, to save the future of the, the planet and its people. But it's not known by yeah. enough people. And um, part of why we're doing this podcast is to make sure that we bring that framework and the relevance for people about why should they care. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think that if what you were telling, and I, we would love to hear what you're, what you're doing, mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure that 90% of everything that you're doing has a place and a clause and a space in the Sustainable Development Goals. So why don't we actually start there? Why don't you tell, me, why don't you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about what, what your job constitutes? Sure. So um, I work for an urban school district um, that has had declining enrollment um, for a variety of reasons. People moving out to the suburbs, mm -hmm. um, not terribly sustainable, um, but also uh, just with the charter schools. So kids mm -hmm. moving to different schools, um, which has meant that we've had to close school buildings. And so, tell us about the demographics of, of your school district, too. So we are... A, over 90% free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm. over 90% uh, minority, so mm -hmm. black and brown students, um, even though that's not close to the makeup of the demographics within our portion of the city. Mm -hmm. So um, we, have, we have had uh, a lot of white flight mm -hmm. from our, not only from the urban core, but especially from public school system. Um, so I have uh, been charged with finding new uses for 30 closed school buildings. So okay. almost 2 million square feet of space. Okay, so um, what are some of the things that you're doing? So we've, we've been pretty lucky that we've had um, several projects converted into affordable senior housing, mm -hmm. um, market rate housing. We have one that's um, a, sorry, blanking, um, uh, community center, mm -hmm. which was really interesting. Every single neighborhood that we talked to really wanted a community center. Mm -hmm. I never thought it would happen. Right. And we did have one that was successful. Uh, we have one converted into an after school system. Um, and then we've had one that is uh, kind of a hub for uh, small businesses that want to co locate mm -hmm. together. So, co working space. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the most recent ones. Um, I, I, I I, 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 no. <laughs> Take the microphone. I guess what Don't I hog that mic. would love to know is you were talking about like in in where in, in the region where you are and with the mentality that you have, you're not really sure how the linkage with a sustainable development goals plan that was hold or that is related to the UN would play with your community. Tell me more yeah. about what you were saying before. Like how how does that, like, how do you care? What happens is when it, you mention like, the United yeah. Nations? Right. So um, I, I was at a public meeting where we were talking about conversion of one of our closed school buildings into mixed-use housing and uh, commercial. And we had a local resident who was really, really worried about this. He thought that by doing a higher density in this neighborhood, so more residents and commercial, that that was some, somewhere a symbol that the UN was going to be taking over um, that location. So there's um, there's a group that are they're called Anti Agenda 21. Okay. Uh, folks, and there's there's some I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or or paranoia about governmental takeover um, when you have any sort of higher density 
changing in zoning or right. these types of uses. So we have to be really careful. Um, planners throughout, uh, I know the state of Missouri, have run into some of these challenges. So we have to be careful about where you talk about a linkage with a project um, that has some really good sustainability factors at the local level. I think there's worry about too much of a connection with the UN because of, of these conspiracies that are out there. How does that make you feel, Claudia? Look, overall, I think that the UN as an institution... Where do you park your black hel helicopter, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do we actually... No, overall, I think that the UN as an institution was created after the Second World War to define a very particular, um, you know, like, just like a very specific set of problems. Mm -hmm. And it has an opportunity right now to reintroduce itself to a completely different set of you know, like problems and society issues mm. that make make it relevant but yet not understood in the bigger sense. I think that the inequalities and the anger that we see all mm. around the world are so deep and intrinsic, you know, like in, in, in just like embedded mm. into people's fears and feelings that yeah. they don't want to see a global institution that is far away, that doesn't resonate yeah. with my local community, just like intervening. And that is a great opportunity for yeah. me, like just like literally just having the sustainable development goals as someone that works for the UN having the sustainable development goals as a framework mm. that basically really spells it out almost like as a citizen to do list as a city to do list mm. what can everybody do and not only that but my dream is that in two years time you feel that what you're doing actually not only is um, something that you're trying to do, but many other people are trying to do it. And everybody's embedded into this framework, into this plan mm. that basically puts you into a context of, well, we're all trying to do the same. Cities have an enormous role to play. Yeah. And overall, I think that it is just like very interesting to hear um, what this conspiracy theory is. And I just don't want to, I just don't want to dismantle it as in like, oh, how can you do that? It's, I yeah. think that it's an opportunity. It is a reality. I mean, yeah. it is a, a real stuff that we have to be talking and precisely again, yeah. we have to be talking about the S word. So yeah. why does sustainability matter? Yeah. That's what and we're calling our podcast. What do you think of that? I think that's great. No, no, that, that totally okay. works. Okay. You're like the S word. Yes. Would it resonate in the Midwest? Since we have the Midwest sitting with us. I think so. Um, it's, it's just uh, how to do it within a Midwest context right. is important. I, I mean, I have a connection um, to farming. Mm -hmm. And my, my dad grew up on a dairy farm. He mm -hmm. still farms today. And they're all about sustainability. But it's, it's framed differently. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that getting those people on the ground, um, you know, to, to be more involved in, right. in shaping kind of the overall discussion and context. Is, so from what you've heard, which of the goals is, um, is Shannon addressing with the planning? Education, but oh, also plenty. I mean, plenty. I think that overall, we, we just look at the list of the 17. I think that you yeah. could feed into a number of them, from yeah. education to gender equality. The most important, I think, is in inequalities. Yeah. Overall, I think that you're yeah. addressing issues about like city planning, infrastructure, education, mm. gender, um, justice and poverty. Yeah. Um, I think that you do have a lot of partnerships ongoing. And yeah. so I just mentioned six of the goals. Now, do uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. no, but like, no, but but do people care about that? Maybe, maybe they would become if, you know, like I lived in Atchison, Kansas, which I know is not Kansas, but you're from Kansas yes. State, right? Like, are you, are, I, I'm going to tell you a story about that. But if you would actually tell John Smith from Atchison, Kansas, like, do you care about the sustainable environment? goes, no. Do you know that you have a measuring stick mm. to actually come back to your government or to your city to say, like, actually, I have the right to have a school and a community center and all of these kind of things. Maybe it would become different. No, I, I, I really do think so that it, um, you know, and I think that's one of the challenges is how to adapt kind of the conversation for, um, for, for who your audience is. Right. And, and that's, a, that's a constant challenge for me in the work that I do just from neighborhood to neighborhood, let right. alone from region to region. Yeah. Um, so kind of different language or maybe just it's the same. Maybe it's just keeping it very simple, keeping it about community and about people. 
or yeah and connecting maybe you use the same language but having that local context yeah and 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 things that are going on in that community specifically i want to tell, tell you my story about that yeah. yes Casa. so when i was um when i was in primary school going into secondary school um i was in a religious school and i really really didn't like it at all no i had like all these nightmares about the nuns coming and after me and all that and my um and my dream was to go into a bilingual school but i've never learned a word of English and right. I went to this bilingual school and they said like over my dead body you can't actually pass this these kids have been speaking and at the same time the nuns were coming to my father and my mother like mama, she's really bad and she has to get out and so on <laughs> so my father said like you know what as a punishment and as a way to see whether you can really survive in a place you really want to speak English you really want to go to that school I'll put you in the middle of Kansas Atchison Kansas where no one <laughs> speaks Spanish for sure no one you will find a friendly face and what actually happened? speaking to you Spanish. how was it I went there for eight months and it was the middle of nowhere in <laughs> Atchison Kansas you know like in a school like a girl's school that had a boys school on the other side oh uh, on gosh. the other side of the hill and the school was in the middle oh my god that was the wildest thing ever you know like I learned <laughs> everything that one should never learn in life in Atchison, Kansas. There is the Amelia Earhart uh, birthplace mu and okay. museum. Okay. Did you Atchison, spend a lot of time Kansas. there? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's saying no. <laughs> I can understand that, but I was there recently. I took my parents there. Kansas. I was. We went to the Amelia Earhart Museum, so that, nice. that's my only connection. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Shannon, thank you very much. Thank and you. we're very it. pleased to have introduced you to the Sustainable Development Goals here on the S Word. On the Fishbowl, Times Square. <laughs> Edith, Edith Lush and Claudia Gonzalez, thanks so much. <laughs>